for some reason Q isn't working. I may have to try relogging, or maybe they, maybe they have to remake their thing. I'm just gonna keep trying a couple times, see if it works. Yeah. Um. Oh, there you go. You got it. Okay. It's launching. Okay, for whatever reason it didn't work for several times. But anyway, it's working now. Maybe they changed to the Liz Leader or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, they're ready. This is the grand finals, guys, of the Pro Game X WoW Spring 2014 tournament. We're here in day two, and this is the grand finals. We've gone all the way through the upper bracket, all the way through the lower bracket, and we are left with these two teams. So pretty pretty exciting stuff, and uh, pretty awesome. And I, I'm very excited to see who's going to be all coming on top. I hope it's not like a one-sided one -sided fair. Yeah, I hope it's, I hope it's pretty back and forth. Yeah. yeah, I would like that as well. I feel like it should be. I mean, Looney Team is playing pretty hot, although I'm not sure how this matchup goes anymore. This boom kit is showing, uh, you know, a lot. I, I know there's a couple of boom kits on yesterday being pretty high rated and stuff running it. So maybe boom kits expect to kind of look out for once gear comes out. You know, like a lot of they have a lot of it seems like they have a lot of damage and a lot of pressure that they can push it, especially with those cyclones. So I feel like if there's one team that's going to be able to beat them, it's going to be this DKLA team. They haven't lost yet. They're strong. Zipai is uh, coming off that win from the other European tournament, so he's obviously, you know getting comfortable playing in these tournament situations and we just instantly see Katasaur running in on this boom team, you know, wanting to get aggressive, wanting to play up there and uh, the flame shocks are going to surely be coming out from uh, from this Ellie Shaman, there one goes out, we're going to have to see if Looney uh, wants to dispel these flame shocks or not, but there's a full hex coming on to red hot, will be decursed there and it looks like their target actually is going to be Looney, the target player is going to be Looney, DK gets over there, you know, popping his guard out, popping everything, but the DK has already burst down so low, he doesn't really have anything, he's already used his AMS and everything, so he's going to have to be playing, pulling back, you know, the AMS comes up, the IVF comes up, so he'll be fine, but just tons of damage instantly coming in from this LSD. And I'm actually surprised that they're able to put out so much uh, pressure every time someone wants to touch Looney. Yeah. People can't seem to get onto him because they're just they're just punishing him for it every well, time. Well, I mean, Katasur was in the Holy Presence. That was a big problem. Um, he ran in in the Holy Presence and just got rocked. And you know, at, at once he was already low, he went into blood, and I think he's going to stay there now um, as he's realizing just how much damage that can come out onto him. Um, but the thing is, you know, if you can't kill DK instantly, you usually can't kill them. You have to 100 to 0 them, um, pretty much. So we'll, we'll see what's going to happen here. I mean, uh, Trix does get feared up. Uh, Walrix has used his, uh, his his trinket already, so and that is the only trinket down just just yet. Uh, Katasura taking quite a bit of damage, but as you can see, the AMS already back up now. Um, so he's going to be just fine. And I mean, he is spamming that conversion out and uh, sitting in Blood Presence now. So I don't think he has too too much to worry about with with, with all that damage reduction in Blood Presence. But look at Trix actually taking a lot of damage and. Having to pull back here. Oh my god, the Ellie Shaman down to 100k HP. A nice clone onto, onto the Druid. Could he actually go down here? They forced the Trinket out. Uh, so no tr Trinket on the Druid, and now Katasura getting extremely low. This LSD2 is just on a tear, man. They're putting out so much pressure right now. The MCS comes out onto Katasura. They're trying to finish him off. Will they be able to do it? No, the AMS gets popped out of that MCS. The Trix does get feared up. He's get, The fear actually, unfortunately, breaks instantly to those dot sticks. There was only two dots on him, but it broke right away. Uh, he does get knocked back on that Tranquility, but the Tranquility more than enough to top his team off. And, uh, very unfortunate for them there. Uh, but look at his sketch now. He's going to have to pop that uh, Symbiosis shield wall and really pull back as he's taking a lot of pressure himself. Yeah, that was definitely some crazy damage from the LC coming onto that DK Shaman team. They're, they were all uh, like dipping around almost 30% health with that Tranquility really to top them off. But now they don't have that cooldown. The Druid doesn't have Trinket and he's stuck in a full fear in fire behind. Shaman not actually able to get this uh, Tremor Totem off. The NSX comes out onto Red Hot. Not going to be able to defeat the Scourge. Pulling too far. There's the Dispel from a sketch. Very good job by him. But the Shaman in a lot of trouble. MCS onto Terra. It does finally fade, and a full clone coming up on this Shaman does end up tricking that, so great offensive clone coming from this Boomkin, recognizing the Shaman's not going to be in trouble, the CC chain is done on the Boomkin, we have to CC the Shaman's, those can't come in. There's the offensive beam on the Shaman, maybe try to get a fear on the Druid with that, would be very, very good, because it kind of is a good cross CC, but just damage coming to the Shaman, there's a clone on that Lava Burst, and this LST just has so much pressure, they're just stopping the heals from the Druid, making sure he can't heal Oh my god, dude, and double and star oh gosh, surge comes in! So oh, he, he, he almost killed, took him out, dude, he had the double star surge prox, gets him at 50k, and no Another, another star search came proc came out, but he was actually ghoul stunned up and he couldn't get it off. He couldn't kill him. He almost had triple star search procs. <laughs> that would have been the win right there, man. Uh, another star search shooting out there. And uh, this Moonkin is a lord, dude. He's just pumping out damage. Look at these star searches just, just shooting out every once in a while. Like pretty pretty insane. Anytime one crits, you have to be you have to be relatively scared. So um, a sketch is you know doing a good job so far. Really, really uh, playing extremely well this game. Yeah, definitely playing extremely well. And every time he clones someone, it seems like he's forcing a trinket. Like, he just cloned the DK, forces a trinket out of that. Every time he clones a Judas, forces a trinket. So, these clones that he's doing are just being so effective. 
offensively and defensively that it's just it just seems hard for this this DK team to actually push in and do anything. The DK does get stuck in a fear, there is a spell, but it, it's a, instantly put into a clone on all of his cooldowns. I mean, that's Gargoyle, that's Unholy Frenzy, that's everything. He's just instantly cloned on it, and he's not going to be able to get that much pressure. They are seeming to want to go into the Warlock Red Hot. He does have that Flame Shock, the Gargoyle is targeting him, they're trying to do as much damage as they can possible, but it doesn't seem like they're doing too much. They're trying to grip him back into a core position, but he's just hopping under the casualty. You can see he's kind of leaning towards the gate, but he doesn't even have to. He gets back there. Kind of in a bad position, but he's fine. The, the Sphyxiate does go on to Looney, he's back there, but he's at full health. You know, his Boomkin is just off healing so well, off healing, doing everything he needs to. And Looney is just sitting in the back, tunneling healers when he needs to, avoiding CC as much as he can. And just great play from this LSD, getting all the pressure that they can on this DK team. And I feel like the longer the game goes, the more in favor it actually becomes of the LSD, because I don't think mana is going to be an issue. They're not pushing in enough on Looney. He's actually just sitting down, taking a little sip there from, uh, from a drink. And a sketch is being gripped in here, so maybe some trouble on him. There's a double grip, but you can maybe see him battle over, but he gets it tipping oh down solo God. onto 100k, and the Earth Sock comes out, and the Trinket as well. So tons of damage, maybe the Boom people will be the target later, but this, this uh, DK team is showing signs of light. Dude, look at the procs, so shooting out of the, shooting out of this uh, this Munkin. He gets the full clone on Tarex, and I think that's going to have to be trinketed. Uh, the clone actually gets thrown back. I think that was stolen by Katasura. Uh, so he's showing Dr. Frank and how it's done, man. Steals that clone, puts it on his sketch, and keeps his Ellie alive. But this is like the game of procs, man. It's just procs on procs on procs. You know, a sketch gets extremely low from a bunch of lava bursts shooting out, and now uh, then he gets the, the the Ellie extremely low just from him getting a bunch of Star Search procs. So look at these procs just shooting out from both sides, and it's really just seeming like... Whoever gets kind of the better RNG is going to blow someone up, man. It's like, it's just waiting. Both, both of them are waiting to try to blow someone up. And when you see he's going in, actually, uh, trying to get those combo points, uh, build it up for, uh, for MAME, I think. Yeah, definitely. He, he uh, has shown that he favors that in the past, getting those full MAMEs on healers and stuff when they're going for kills. And it's definitely as effective. It's a five-second stun on a team that doesn't have that many stuns. The full clone sitting on Katasuri, he does have his trinket up, choosing not to do that. Very wise decision, I believe, by him. Nothing's really going on. Uh, the Druid does get full uh, feared on that NS, but it does break to damage, and the full clone comes on a sketch, so good CC there by the Druid, and unfortunately wasn't able to be purged off on that fear. Looney going to be sitting in asphyxiate, but the Innervate was thrown him from the Boomkin. The Boomkin realizes he doesn't need that mana from the Innervate, so just throws it onto Looney. Great job by him, and the Heart of the Wild has been popped, so tons of healing coming out, realizing his shield wall is down, and it's going to be tons of pressure coming at him, but he's just oh. like bounding away after the double grip, so great job by him. Yeah, he actually, he actually did it in the air, man. He like... He, he pressed it at the same time as he got gripped, and he just like bounced backwards, and the grip didn't do anything. That's kind of funny. Um, I've never actually seen that, but anyway, the rat's coming out. He's going to be cloned up once again. Uh, Terex is actually doing a great job getting all these clones out constantly. We do see he's caught into the full Hal Terra now, and Walrus taking a lot of damage. Uh, will they be able to get any follow-up onto Terex? So not just yet. Uh, we do see that, the oh, a nice Sean Wall uh, comes out, but he's going to get cloned instantly on it. Uh, and that's kind of dangerous. Now the clone gets swapped over on Treyx, who doesn't have his trinket, and Walrix is going to have his Shawmall ending here very soon. We do see that Star Surge comes shooting out at him. Another Star Surge is going to come out. He's down to 100k. Uh, the Nature's Guardian does proc Treyx. is going to be able to heal him back up, I think, because there's no more CC. Um, we do see the MCS coming out onto him. Triple DR Hollow Terror, unfortunately. He just waited uh, not quite long enough. He needed to wait another second or two. That would have been full. But the trinket's back up for Treyx, and um, not going to be able to be CC for a while, so they are going to stabilize. I think they're definitely going to be able to stabilize here. I mean, the Shaman is going to be coming up in 30 seconds, so maybe they'll try to go for a burst window here as the full clone is still on T-Rex. Um, Looney actually is under a lot of pressure here, dipping down to, you know, 100. Uh, he tops himself up. Big NS crit there. But uh, Walrax under a lot of pressure. He has no Shamal available. It does tremors due to the fear. They're very good job, but the NS heal does come out a little bit late, and there's the full man that we were talking about on the Walrax. It doesn't last too, too long, though. It does fade. And there's a fear on the T-Rex. That's a half fear with no tremor available. Kyosaur in so much trouble dipping down. There comes the AMS. They're just having to pillar so much. I mean, I feel like maybe with full gear, this Boomkin Star Surge box, they just happen so often. It's like there's always one there for burst damage, and it's just insane how often he's doing it. There's the full clone on the DK. He does trinket that, but just to get clones again. It gets so stolen again, though. Uh, so he is going to be able to throw that out on someone. We'll see who he's going to use that clone on. He's going to throw it right back into a sketch. So nice job by Katasura stealing another clone. But look at those Lava Burst procs coming in on Looney. He's just getting absolutely destroyed here by Walrox. He may just go down. He needs to drop the link. He's not going to do it. The link too late. And he gets absolutely exploded. Those Ellie Shaman procs, man. Uh, what, it's like I said, it's just a game of procs just waiting until someone lines up, you know, until the stars align. And oh my god, there was like just a million Lava Burst shot out there. And he got exploded. Definitely not over yet, dude. Oh my, he's actually going to go down. They get a cross kill. Are you kidding me? And Warlock Moonkin is actually a sick 2v2 team. You can live forever, dude. I don't know against the DK, though. DKs, DKs are, I feel like, the counter to this. I actually play, I've played this comp a lot because uh, it's just really hard to heal through Necro. That's the problem. Um, but, wow, that is hilarious, man. But uh, it's, I think Red Hot's going to go down on the other side of the map. Uh, we do have Heart of the Wild up, though. Heart of the Wild 
you know, for Tereix, and he's going to try to do, go offensive here as well and try to get as much damage out as possible. You can see a sketch spamming with his healing touches, but it's so hard to heal through, um, heal through the the necro. So we'll see if they're going to be able to pull this off. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. Uh, how well they're going to be able to do this. This is pretty insane, though. The, the fact that they even got that cross kill is actually hilarious. It was wild, yeah. Z, uh, Z5 was on the other side of the map, and they get a full cycle into a full fear cross, and there's no tremor tone available, and you just died through the damage. But mm -hmm. as you said, DKs are very good against this, and with Heart of Wild up on Trex, it's going to be very strong. There's a focal on Trex and a focal on a Skitch, but a Skitch does have Trinket, so getting the better end of that engagement. But does have to throw this Trinket, and focal on to DK off that Hollow Terror, so good job by them. They're just trying to stabilize, I feel, until the Boom can has their cooldowns up back mm -hmm. up. They're not going to be trying to do too much, but the full crown T-Rex does end up breaking into another fear, though, so they might get some pressure here on the Death Knight. Yeah, and I mean, maybe maybe he can just get some procs, man. Maybe he can just shoot, shoot it some procs at his butt and get a kill. We'll see. Uh, he is going to be going for that clone. Nice pummel. Catastar is actually playing so well. He gets the ghoul charge on the clone, pummels the next clone, uh, and now it, the clone comes out on a skitch before he's actually able to get that off. So Catastura is really playing DK about as well as it can be played, I think. Uh, but the Necros are going to be stacking up on a Red Hot here. He's spinning at those Symbiosis heals. He does have a pop his Dark Regen and everything um, here as well. So he's going to get topped off with that Dark Regen. Uh, but, you know, they're actually starting to, to pull ahead a little bit. They're starting to do really well. And, you know, with this full gear, I mean, the spell power is very high. So they can actually heal a, an awful lot. And, uh, I mean, they have Symbiosis Reju, plus all the Moonkin heals. And a Skitch is playing extremely well. Um, so it's possible that they could just live through this and maybe get a kill. We'll find out. Either way, it could go on for quite some time as... As uh, you know, these two v two matches have been known to go a long time. Yeah, for sure they are known to go a long time. Plus, in uh, in two v two, normally dampening happens at five minutes, but in this case, it's going to happen at ten because it's a three v three match. And out of that full fear comes a full clone on Trax. He's sitting to choose all that, and there's the root beam on the death knight. I feel like if Red Hot and the Skitch kind of play defensive, maybe until the boom can tire up, and then try to really push for a kill in that moment, it might be the best situation for them. But uh, he does steal a full fear, throws it onto Red Hot. Great job by uh, Catastor trying to steal those CCs and play aggressive as possible. And uh, but the problem was there was when uh, the Druid was uh, sitting for full fear and full clone. Catastor had his gargoyle up. He had his unholy frenzy up, but he had to play defensive because the Druid ended up seeing that CC. And uh, the problem right now is the Skitch is completely ill, having to throw the Innovate on himself, and is just dying to this death. You know, it might, I, I'm really curious. Do you think he even bought water? Because this is this is the TR, and he probably just set up his character and probably is like, Lugans don't actually oom in arena. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually willing to bet he did not buy water, which is actually a big deal in, in a 2v2 match like this. And you can also buy food, and you can eat and drink in arena at the same time. Um, with that food, even if you're not a mage, and I'm guessing that he did not buy it, but uh, we'll see if it actually comes into play. He did just get a ton of mana back there uh, with those procs. He just, he just got his full mana bar back, basically. Um, and we'll see if it actually ends up mattering at all. Terex actually kicking a lot of damage as he does take that UA to spell there. And it's just going to jump in offensively. He wants to go hard, uh, but he's going to get bashed up. He does have his, his uh, Heart of the Wild up, man. They're trying to burst down a Skitch. Uh, we do see that Terex taking a lot of damage. He's shooting out those Starfire procs nonstop, or Star Surge, rather. He's getting so much damage out, and he's trying to get right back to him. Terex actually may go down. He still has his Trinket available, but he hasn't. there's nothing to trink it. He actually pops uh, the Ursox as well. He's taking so much damage here, though. The Mame comes in. The root beam goes down, and a Skitch is just going all in offensive here. Uh, another Star Surge proc coming out, and he may actually go down is he gonna survive oh my god it looks like he is gonna survive and now a skitch may be in a lot of trouble here he went so offensive took so much damage during that whole time the asphyxiate comes in this could be it for him if a soul reaper goes up he didn't actually have a soul reaper up there it would have procced if he already had it up he doesn't now it's up can he actually heal himself above that hp he needs to desperately the soul reaper does not go off but we do see Terex chasing after him now. A Skitch has gotten back. He is going to heal himself back up. And oh my god, that was so close, man. He, he went all in for that. He couldn't get the kill, though, and barely survived as a result. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that Starshirt's coming when he was at around 100k health. But this is an intense 2v2. I love watching Boomkin Warlock play. There's just, it's just such a fun comp for 2v2. The full clone coming in kind of sorry. He's choosing to desecrate ground on that. And I feel like the kill target might actually be the Druid. It seems like the DK is a very hard target to kill. But the uh, Asphyxiate comes out onto that Skitch. And the Soul Reaper does proc. He's down to 100k health. He's trying to cut away. But it's just so hard to get this DK off his back. He does uh, travel form bound away from him. Use the roots. Gets behind the pillar. Starts casting a Cyclone on Terex, which is really, really good. This is such an offensive Cyclone. There's no Hots on Catastro. There's just oh, actually a yeah, full Hots on Ironbark. My mistake. He <laughs> looks just fine there. <laughs> and completely okay. And uh, as soon as he's just trying to live here, you know, he's, he's trying to just, you know, run around the pillar until, you know, the opportunity arises that they can get fears on the Entrex. And there it comes. There's a the full fear. But just switching it over to the DK. And honestly, this looks like a, a very uphill battle for the Spoon team. Yeah, I mean, oh god, the Soul Reaper's gonna go off, dude. The Soul Reaper's gonna go off. Is it gonna kill him if he crits? He's dead. Ooh, oh god, it didn't crit. 20k HP through the shield wall. If he didn't have the shield wall, he was dead there. Um, and even with that, he's in trouble, man. It, it's 
This is a tough match for them. Uh, the Moonkin just has such a hard time surviving with his DK training on him. He's always on the back foot. You can't go offensive. And the Sorybreeze up. I think this is going to be the end for him. Gargoyle comes out as well. There's a Strangulate. He actually has uh, the Trinket, but he's not going to use it. It just came off cooldown. Can't blame him for not noticing. But yeah, I mean, I think that was the ending we were all kind of expecting to that match. It's just, I mean, they made it close, though. They almost <laughs> killed that Resto Druid uh, with that kind of Heart of the Wild all-in, man. He just wasn't healing himself. He just went, he just went ham. Um, went for it and um, couldn't get it. So yeah, super close uh, first match still coming out. Yeah, it, the funny thing is, if it was like any other any other two v two comp, you actually have a good chance. Like that, that Moonkin Warlock is actually really good in twos. Um, but DKs are actually really tough against it because like hybrid heals are super strong, but hybrid heals aren't super strong when you have to heal through Necro. That's that's kind of the issue there. Yeah. So and DKs are super tanky as well with conversions. Sometimes yeah. it's just hard to get them down, especially yeah. if you rest or do hots and stuff. Like I said, he had no hots, he had full hots and iron bark, and yeah. there's just no way DK is ever going to die through those amount of heals. So it was a great first game though. The uh, the DK LA team doesn't end up taking it, and really unfortunate that Lumi did go down there because I mean, if the match had played on, it, maybe Zipai would have died even uh, so. I mean, really close. It was nowhere uh, near to one-sided match at all. Oh, yeah, I mean, and he just didn't get the link down in time. We've seen that so many times in this tournament, man. And, like, what a disappointing way to end. Pardon? Yeah, I know. It's like they link and it goes down, but it doesn't end up registering because they just die before the tick comes off. I think one of the things people need to realize is... This is something I, um, like, like, when I'm playing with CD and stuff, like, I always just yell, yell at him to do it. It's like, or when I play with any shaman, people, like, shamans are in the habit of, like, they want to wait until you're in range of link to press link but then if you do that sometimes it doesn't actually distribute you know so yeah, I know. if you just press the button and like let the person walk into it like as long as they're right there you know what i mean i think it's actually better to just press it and not wait and then the person can get in there and it can distribute the hp plus you actually get the 10 percent damage reduction which in a case where it's that close can actually save you so yeah um, for sure definitely would have been good for me to get that link off they could have definitely won that game but it is unfortunately not going to go their way let's go down to a 2v2 i'm actually really surprised that residue lived it was so scary when he got down to 70k and a star shooter walking around the pillar i thought i was going to kill him for sure but he the hots did do their work and kept him alive yeah i, I mean if that crit he was dead which is pretty yeah, funny sure. but um that would have been hilarious if the boomkin team ended up winning that 2v3 yeah. would have yeah. been awesome pretty crazy man pretty crazy close um but yeah i think if the shaman guys linked down a second earlier they win that match for sure because uh, the yeah. druid just had no had no trinket. He got full feared and, and they killed him. So anyway, uh, insane game one for the grand finals. Can't really ask for anything better than that, man. Um, well, I mean, you can, but you're not gonna get it. So <laughs> um, <laughs> it is it is one zero for Procking. They're one game away from taking the grand finals and uh, claiming their championship here in this tournament. Uh, you know, Blue Virginia battled all the way through the losers bracket. Have won four straight series. Almost won that game one. Uh, they're not out of it just yet. We'll see. We'll see what they're going to be able to get here done on uh, on Tolver. Tolver. Definitely not out of it yet. Uh, hopefully this time it won't come down to you know uh, the Spirit Link not being able to be used in time because I definitely like games that you know where every cooldown is going to be used and uh, it's a really just a great battle. But uh, we'll have to see. I mean, this Boomkin team was seemed to be the, the ones having most of the pressure throughout the whole game. I mean, the Sneaky team often seemed to be the ones on the back foot. So yeah. if the Boomkin team can end up doing that again and you're getting those full fears with like the beams on the Boomkin and stuff that they have been doing, I can definitely see them lining up a kill on Z5. Yeah, so can I. I mean, really, um, I agree. The LSD2 was way ahead the whole match. Um, it was pretty much just like procs of the gods coming out of the Ellie Shaman, which is often how they win their games. Just blue loony up instantly at the end. But look at this damage out onto him uh, already. He's going to have to pop that stone form just for the damage reduction. A root beam does come down onto him. Uh, they're trying to get the CC over on a Trey See, there's the full clone onto him. And this could be some trouble. Maybe going to be able to force something out. Uh, actually, Spearwalker's Race, uh, Iron Bark goes up, and he's actually going to Spearwalker's Race spam heals on himself. And those actually healed for a lot. Wow. At least Shaman Healing is, is quite, quite strong now. Um, but Catastar getting a little bit low. Uh, going to be taking some damage, but we'll have to actually just you know pull back. The clone comes in. That one's going to be uh, Desecrated Ground if he gets right out of that. But look at Z-Pi. He's just staying low constantly. Now he's going to get cloned up. Uh, actually, Clone denies the entire Tranquility, so really well played there by Skitchen. Maybe he can get something done here onto him as a result out of that. There's the Star Surge coming in. Uh, the Shadow Fury catches both. Another Star Surge comes in. The MCS comes in. Uh, Nature's Guardian does proc. They can't get the follow-up CC onto Treyx, so... 
Yeah, really great play by them. Um, they forced the, uh, at the very first time when they root beamed uh, Walrex, they ha he had to force his trinket because he had to turn with the fear on Turex, otherwise he would have been in so much trouble in that root beam. So they force a trinket there, and then they MCS there to cover the fear again, and that's the last tremor totem he has. He doesn't have a tremor totem for another minute because he did already reset it. So if they can push in and get more fears than Turex, they can actually start forcing trinkets from the rest of Druid and forcing more cooldowns from them. And just by keep going, this Elishan is doing so much, but. Catasaur, on the other hand, dipping down around 250k health, does uh, get actually offensively cloned there for half, and uh, MCS coming out of Walrex with the full fear onto Turex, that's the fear I was talking about. There's no oats for this, but Lunia on the other hand is in a lot of trouble. Dipping down to 200k health, but just behind the pillar, spamming those healing surges off, and uh, healing tide is actually off cooldown, or on cooldown right now. Turex stuck in that full cyclone in cat form, and uh, but I feel like Walrex it will be okay. Oh my gosh, the Boomkin dipping down so, so low, forced to might have Ursaw up there to pick himself back alive, and uh, these procs are just dictating whichever team has the pressure like you were talking about. Yeah, exactly, and um, I mean, pushing him back there is pretty scary, but I like how in the face uh, of this team, this LC2 is playing. They're being very aggressive. The clone comes out on a Katasura. Um, you know, Trinket available for Treyx as well as Katasura. Uh, Warwick almost has his back up as well, and we do see Trinket available on everyone on this LC2. They're pulling back a little bit, and they're kind of just putting this, uh, this DK in a position where they can just turn on him a bit. Fear comes in onto Walrix. Uh, he's going to get spelled out of that. Shadow Fear, though, going to land onto the Druid. Uh, unfortunately, not able to actually get a fear off of that. The clone does come in, though. Um, they're going to have that follow-up clone. What are they going to be able to get done here? Walrus taking quite a bit of damage. Can they follow that up again? No, nice. Uh, the reclone does come in, but Red Hot's not really in position, and I don't think they're going to get anything more here, unfortunately, for them. Yeah, I don't think so either. The Moonkin's playing super defensive. He doesn't have that, uh, that Earth stock up anymore, so he wants to be playing back and just kind of turn on this DK. The DK pet will end up going down here, so, I mean, that's another bonus of this, guys. They have the DK pet to turn on as well, and that's just another thing, not only to give them more props, but just something that they can kill off and just reduce the pressure, but look at this DK LA team. They're under so much heat. The Moonkin procs are coming in onto the onto that LA Shaman, and they aren't going to force that Nature's Guardian 2 proc, and he's going to have a lot of health right now. He's up to about half, but... I mean, if they can get another big CC chain on that Vestra if the Boomkin feels comfortable enough to push in onto him, they can get a lot of things done. And a full fear overlap with the cycle on the DK, he's going to choose to end up saying that as his team will be okay. But the Shamwall was also forced on Walrus. So there comes the full clone Shadow Fear on the Walrus. They see a Shamwall, or I mean, they see something popped here, but no. There's the beam onto the Shaman. Really great cross to see the full fear coming in as well. The Shaman choosing not to try and get that feeling fairly safe, you know, letting it drinks up that fear, just kind of blossom behind the pillar. And as you said before, Ellie Shaman's heals do do so much, they can crit upwards of 100,000 with full gear, so they're definitely not something to laugh about. Yeah, and especially because you can do the Unleashed Lava Burst and then you can get an Echo proc if you're playing Echo, and you can get the double Lava Burst plus procs off procs and also proc off of procs. That's when it gets really insane, because you can just all of a sudden have four Lava Bursting out. And here comes that swap onto Looney. Uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to get that damage in onto him. Uh, Walker uh, does pop uh, the Spear Walker's Grace to try to get that damage out onto him. Does get a couple procs out, but really he's getting pre-healed heavily uh, by a Skitch there. And he did use the Stone Form for this DK disease. He's going to be all right. We do see the Heart of the Wild disease there by a Skitch as well uh, to, to heal through that swap. Uh, but now he is going to be the target. Um, he's going to be putting out some more damage himself with that. Uh, does kind of just a leap away there and we do see uh, that he's just putting out a massive amount of healing uh, Looney right now is back behind the pillar and uh, Katasura has pulled way far in uh, Starfire does land and dipping him down pretty low Katasura has to be careful now uh, we'll have to pull back to his team but uh, Walrix is actually getting bursted down now as well he does actually trinket the root beam uh, but he's going to get rooted right back in the beam and now he's hexed offensively uh, there's a full clone on Tereix they're going to be putting out a ton of damage here if they can follow this up they could actually get a kill Walrix getting down so so low uh, the Nature's Guardian is already pronged he's down to 100k has to pop the Shaman Wall uh, Howl comes out onto Rex. Do they have anything else to follow that up? The offensive clone now onto Warrix, no hots are up on him, and he has the Iron Bark and the Sean Wall. It's such a painful situation. Yeah, definitely. Those clones are really just devastating for this team. And every single time they're going for those Wookiees, you actually make yourself go down. You yep. get to, oh my goodness, the props are coming in. Trax does not use his trinket on that really DR cyclone, and he just dies to the damage of this Boomkin Ali, or this Boomkin uh, Warlock team. So this Boomkin Warlock team definitely showing that if the game lasts long enough, they can definitely get enough pressure to kill. And I really love that they're rooting the Shaman. That's preventing Shamal, that's preventing Totem uses, that's preventing interrupts, and they're just ceasing the Druid nonstop of that. Crowd control. I really feel like the DK pushing in there was the mistake that kind of led to that kill because he just got so, so low and just put the Druid in a really poor position. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just feel like so many kills this tournament have been just greedy, like greedy stuff. Like, the Druid, oh. Druid ended the game with both Meld and Trinket. Like, I mean, he sat, he sat like a full fear into a full clone, into a half fear, into a half clone, into a triple DR fear, into an MCS, into a triple DR clone, or something like that. Like, he didn't yeah. trinket anything, insane. and his insane. shaman died. Like, yeah. it's just, like, you know, you can't, there's, there's, no, there's no complaining when you die like that. It's just, he, he, literally, if he trinketed one out of any seven of those, those CCs, his shaman probably would have lived. So, I don't know. I, I just think it's, like, really, really greedy. Like, yeah, like, his DK overextended, and that's kind of, I think, what 
pulled them all in and put him into that position where he was getting CC'd. But at the same time, he never used his trinket. So it's like, I don't know. I just think it's, I just think it's really greedy, and uh, it's going to be a game that the, I'm sure they want back. Yeah, I'm sure it's definitely a game that they want back, because they definitely have the potential to kill. I mean, Heart of the Wild was used on that last Gargoyle, so the next Gargoyle wouldn't be hard up, and they could get a lot of pressure with that on Lunia or something like that, because that's, like, that's like the target that they're going for. But obviously this is going to be their map pick now. They're probably going to pick a smaller map than that, because it seems like it's pretty hard for them to connect onto Lunia without putting themselves out of position. Yeah. Just something that the team really likes on that Toveron Arena, and uh, they really showed that they can, you know, do that there. Um, but yeah, I mean, on Nagrand even, I mean, the Boomkin team didn't have to score any kill, so it seems like if the game goes long enough, the Boomkin team has enough CC for the Dresser dude, definitely the Lady will land a kill, but the dude was very greedy not checking there. I mean, the Shaman had no Sham wall, he just Iron Barked and Snaring Warded, but it got cloned off, and he still didn't want to trinket, even when, like, all the, I mean, that's all the cooldowns they have, so there's definitely a, a misplay by him. Yeah, and I mean, Heart of the Wild was given up. For all that, you know, it was yeah. it was literally everything. Every offensive cooldown was up, you know. Um, so just really greedy. But uh, Blaze Edge is going to be the pick, and uh, this is going to be the final game of of this uh, tournament, guys. It is going to be Blaze Edge uh, as the map, and you know that thunderstorm. It makes sense, but at the same time, they're the ones with the melee, and the other team has knockoffs as well. So, what do you think about that? Do you think that they're just? Uh, my guess from this is that they're going to try to knock the shaman to the bottom and then just train him. I'm not sure if you remembered um, that, that game that they played against the God Comp on this map, but yeah. it seems like they really, really like this map based on just positioning it. It forces the enemy team kind of to stack up in that little position, but I also feel like Boomkins are insane on this map. Boomkins are so good. Just the way that the map positions itself, it just allows them to turret so much damage on the enemy team. There's not really much that they can do about it, so we have to see which which combat favors. I feel like the Boomkin team actually is, might be happy about this, but I mean, they have a Warlock, they have they have the Z-Axis, they have a Boomkin for Nox, Boomkin traditionally does very well with damage on this map, and I feel like that might not be the smartest pick for this Ellie Shaman team. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out if it works for them, man. Um, I, I was honestly more expecting like a runes or something and just go ham yeah, on Yeah, me as well. But I agree because pushing in on Lumi is going to be very scary because the yeah. casters get, are very, it's very easy to get between a healer on this map when, when, you're, when your DPS are pushing it. We'll have to see what's going to happen. Yep. We will indeed. Uh, there's the grip immediately on a red hot. It's going to be tough to get a gateway on this map. We'll see if he's going to go for it. Uh, just try to demon soul out that gateway or something like that. But he's going to get hexed up. And who will the target be? It is going to be Looney. We can see the Earth Grab immediately came down, though, on a Catastar. He's going to get cloned off of that. So Catastar not having the start he wants. You know, you want to pop all your cooldowns with that trigger proc, uh, but he wasn't able to get it. And um, it was kind of funny. Looney did a little loop to loop and came around. But they're going to go on to, uh, on to uh, Red Hot, who is actually just going to port right out of there. And he could go for a gateway now. This is the perfect time. He, I think he really should. But he just wants to keep the pressure rolling. And we'll see if they're going to go for that Trix. It does get that clone. We do see Shamal has already been popped. Double Howl comes out on the DPS. Red Hot pushing in, trying to get that fear. Going to get shocked. Uh, the knockoff does not connect, unfortunately, for him. Uh, we do see the Hots now put over on a Katasura. A regrowth comes out there. Uh, Walrix is going to have... And the Iron Bark up as well, so Sean Wall, Iron Bark, both used. Catastar are getting quite low here. I'd love to see Red Hot just pull back and try to get that gateway off, though. I think it'll really just kind of secure their position in this game. I really think it would, too. I mean, even getting a bottom gate, if you really need to, wouldn't even be that bad. Just something like that would be really bad. Looney dipping so, so low. Oh, my God, getting propped on. Dipping down to around 100k health, topping himself off with that huge Boomkin. I really got a Boomkin NS seal there. And just uh, topping himself off back there. That was the Boomkin Heart NS and the Trank as well. So this entire team is top. So they'll be okay for the next 45 seconds, but... That was definitely a very scary swap on Looney in the middle of the map. Uh, Walrex ended up entering an uh, offensive clone on a Shamo, but we do see the full clone coming in onto that, uh, the rest of the We should see a Disorienting to rock this, maybe? Yeah, there's a Disorienting to rock that with the Hallow Terror. No cover, unfortunately, on this Ellie Shaman, so he is going to be able to tremor that. Yeah, Tarek's right trinketed too, dude. He trinketed too, and that's a big mistake, and the, the Iron Bark is up, but will it be enough? Now he's full hexed up, and he's not in range to get Decurse. Uh, can he actually get there for the Decurse? Now he's finally Decurse. Um, but yeah, the Trinket did come out, so. Uh, Tremor, Tremor was actually not on cooldown, like, according to this, so unless he prepped Tremor, I'm not sure if you saw that, but uh, the Druid did trinket there for sure. Yeah, the Druid definitely did trinket that full fear, which is unfortunate for them. I mean, they don't want to be trinketing fears this early in the match, especially when you're playing with a Shaman that has two Tremors early on. Maybe you didn't reset it or something. But uh, there's another full fear, and a Tremor is enough for one more second. I want to see if you Tremor this fear late. He, he, he she's not to do it. He's dipping so, so low, but Luna on the other side also dipping super low. Down to 200k, this DK just tuning the tunnel right into him, but... The full haunt dots are up on Walrus. If we can see a full clone, oh, maybe the, come oh up. man, he stole the, the hex. The offensive hex is so good onto Looney, but it's decursed, and I think he'll end up being okay. That was actually Katasura. He stole the hex and he held it, and he hexed a uh, hexes heal when he was rooted up top. That was beautiful. Um, and they they did get the gateway up top, and he needs desperately to get to it, man. He's so far away from the gateway, and he needs the kite to it. 
uh, you know, he just you can't survive against that DK when he's just sitting constantly on you like that. But look at Treyx, Catacer, and Walrix. They're getting so, so low. Looney's topped off now. They have the gateway up top. This is the position they wanted. And now, I mean, what do you do with this map pick? The Tranquility comes out there from Treyx. It's going to top everyone back off, but... Uh, Looney gets gripped back down to the bottom. A beautiful clone prevents the second grip coming in, and Looney's already out of there. He's already Ghost Wolf back up top, and he's just in a fantastic position, and this is going to be tough here. Uh, we'll have to watch out uh, Walrix, see what he can get done. Uh, Walrix just trying to kite around. Uh, the Star Search comes in. He's going to be in some trouble. He's already down 200k. He has no hots on him at all from Treyx, and Treyx has no trinket. Can they get the CC on him? There's the full fear. Uh, Iron Bar comes out, but will it be enough? The clone, unfortunately, fully overlapped uh, with that fear, uh, but he is going to be able to kite out of there. He's going to get the Healing Surge off. And uh, looks like he is going to be okay. Uh, I believe he did pop his Shawmall there as well, though. So Shawmall down and Ironbark down. And the Halotair yeah. comes out. Catacera could be in trouble. Definitely tons of cooldowns coming out there. Catacera does throw up the AMS, so I think he'll be okay. The Dude Trinket does come back up, so that's kind of a saving grace for them. Rolex also, his uh, Elemental Call just came back up, so that means he has two Tremors available right now as a Tremor Disc just come up cooldown as well. So no fear is going to be really able to see it unless they're able to cover it. And they have a silence, so we're going to have to see what's going to be able to happen. The Disorient and the Shadow Fear coming to Trex, a little bit of overlap, but not too big, but no CC really following that. And the DK team is trying to look to go offensive, maybe on this Boomkin. They pop the Gargoyle on him, but he does have all those Starship procs. And there's the full fear onto Trex, not able to be tremored out of this. So that's really, really bad for them because he does have two tremors available. I'm wondering if he used one there and so was out of range or something, but no. He didn't end up using it, just able to pull back to his dude. And he up being okay. Shamwell isn't available for 20 more seconds, so if they can get uh, an offensive push there, he might be okay. But if Full Hex goes on, then he gets the curse. He's in the fix. But I think they're okay. This team is definitely on the back foot. That's a half bear onto the rest of Druid, and he's just, he's just being tunneled into on this map. Full offensive clones on him, and I think they're just going to switch it over onto that death mate. Yeah, no, I think they will, man. And there's the fear coming out. The clone onto uh, Drax is going to be full. Warwick's so in trouble. Um, there's not enough hots out. And Drax is constantly getting caught in the CC. It doesn't look like there's any follow-up. The NS comes out. Now the Shadow Fury. There's going to be a fear coming out. Nice LOS there from Red Hot to make sure he can't get shocked. Um, but the Tremor does come in. Uh, there's a refear. It's, the Tremor's still down, though, unfortunately. So the Tremor breaks that one as well very, very fast. We do see a disrupting roar, though, coming in on a Trix. Still has a trinket available. Sean Wall goes up from Walrix. Uh, Katasura sitting very low as well. Uh, will he be able to catch them back up and heal through this? You know, Looney uh, is looking like he's just in such a good position. Walrock's in a lot of trouble. He may not trinket. The trinket comes out, but it's so, so late. Will it be enough? He trinketed with about 0.1 seconds left on that clone. And Walrock's, I think, is going to go down. Walrock's is 70k, 60k, 40k. The Herd of the Wild comes up from Trix, but will it will not be enough. The trinket too late from Trix to pick him back up. And once again, just a little too greedy. Uh, trying to hold on to that trinket, trinketed the last split second of that cyclone, popped the heart of the wild after, but it was not enough. And we have our champions battling back. Can you believe it, dude? Look at that boom can do. He's like, he's like dancing on the boom. Oh my god, he's dancing on their bodies, man. I can't believe it. Uh, they lose the first game, they win the next two, they lost the first series, and they get all the way through the lower bracket and win. So Exciting stuff from that boom can team. Great yeah. job by that. Amazing stuff, dude. Amazing stuff. And this is this is the story of the tournament. Like like every every single game almost is like people not using their cooldowns or using their cooldowns late, man. And I think it's yeah. probably a lot of just nerves and stuff and playing in a tournament and you know. I would guess, but I mean he had no hot soap and his Sean was at fifty percent and yeah. dipping and his DQ was at fifty percent and when you have no hot zone as a druid and you're sitting at full CC and your team's dying with no cooldowns, I mean you have to trink it in that situation. Yeah. He did, but it was just way too late. Yeah, I mean he trinketed Literally, the, like, uh, like with 0.1 seconds or something, there was like a, like a fraction of a second left on, on the clone when he trinketed. And it was just like one of those oh shit moments that he realized he had to do something, but it was too late then. And uh, he got Howl of Terror, it was tremored, but uh, he just didn't have enough globals at that point to ever, ever pick him back up. So, For sure, this LSD team just proving how, how, good, that, uh, how good they can be and how they... So that's like five straight wins for them. Just take claiming first place, getting that 900 yeah. euros. So great job by them. Pretty sick, man. I, I'm impressed. I mean, <laughs> like, they're literally, they're, I, if you say you predicted it, you're a liar because no one predicted that they would win after, like, after they they got smacked down, dude, in the first match. Like, they lost instantly <laughs> to to the TSG in the first game uh, that they played. They went straight to the lower bracket, won all the way through the lower bracket, win the grand finals. Uh, pretty pretty awesome. And pretty um, it was cool to just see how much they've like improved throughout the tournament from that first series to the end. The first series that you know they you're, you just kind of looked hopeless. The second series, um, you know they they beat the the Feral LSD, but it was like very long games. It looked like there was kind of like they didn't know what the hell to do in the first game, and and then they just kind of got better and better and better. 
And uh, they just got on a roll. And as a result, man, they're going to take it. And I think we're supposed to have um, an interview here. Um, oh, okay. With one of the players from the LSD. Yeah. Uh, we will see. I'm just trying to see uh, who is available for that or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, but yeah, I mean, that map pick, dude, did not work out at all. No, that I didn't looked, think that.